be doing? It has been a crazy week for me, a couple weeks. Anyway, <laughs> um, doesn't sound like it's been crazier than Julie's. I don't know if I'd want to go through that many names. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm sure that wasn't all that she had to do. <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, we're going to be talking about hosting Zoom meetings tonight and how to, how to set that up and, um, and do that and just go through some of the controls. Um, there's no way we can get through it all, but that's why on the bottom of the, I think it was on the email, not the actual outline. I put some links to like videos so you can go and watch them and, um, the lady, there's a couple people on Zoom um, customer support that do great videos. So if, if you use the Zoom customer support, they, they, do, they have some wonderful training videos. So, um, but I wanted to start out just kind of really quickly going over um, the controls of when you're attending a Zoom meeting. So um, is everybody getting practiced at turning their microphone on and off and their video and uh, switching from your speaker to gallery view, uh, using the chat. Does anybody have any questions about those before we move on with hosting a Zoom meeting? What is chat? What was that? What is chat? So down at the, well, depending on if you're Apple or PC, the, the, there's like the menu bar and it says chat. And if you click that, it will show up over at the side of your screen and you can you can type to people. So like say you're you're you don't have a speaker or a microphone on your computer, you can still interact and okay. ask questions and things like that. And then depending on how the Zoom meeting is set up, you may not be able to even use your um, microphone. So like if you're attending one where it's just a speaker, um, I did one last weekend. Um, it was a a virtual book signing for um, Craig Johnson and his new Longmire book. And so you, you couldn't speak on it, but you could, thank goodness. And they couldn't, they couldn't hear my dogs barking, um, <laughs> but you could type and ask questions. So um, if it, but if you see it, 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 it just is down at the, well, on mine, it's at the bottom. It may be at the top at yours and it just says chat. And if you click that button, it'll pop up. So if you see that chat window and you want to type hello or something, you can type it and you can see that. So. That was. That was those questions. And then um, like the host can allow you to share your screen as well. So if you had something to say and you wanted to show something that was on your desktop, which I'm gonna be doing in a little bit um, to go through the hosting so you can see those screenshots. So um, you'll see that, but the host has to, if, if you're not the host, they have to give you permission to share the screen. But it's just that one's at least green. You can click, you can see that easy, and you click on that, and then you can share your screen. All right. If there's no other questions, we are going to get started on our uh, learning how to do Zoom. So now I got to find. All right. Okay. Hopefully. Okay. Does everybody see the blue screen? All right. So we are going to get started here. All right. So the first thing you have to do is you have to sign up. So you have to go online to the zoom.us. I put that link in the outline and you just go up here and you sign up for the free version. So that's like the basic version. So there are some limitations to that, but um, you know, if you're, if you're just using it to chat with your family or, you know, maybe do a little committee meeting or something like that, where you're not going to have a lot of people on it, it, it works just fine. Mm -hmm. 
So you would click that little um, orange sign up button and it's going to just ask you your, your basic information. And then once you set up a password and everything, you can log on. And you will get to this screen. So this is the main screen. I went ahead and clicked on the profile here so you can see. So it gives you um, this personal information. Um, here's one of the restrictions that you can only have 100 people in your Zoom meeting. And um, there's a time limit also of 40 minutes. Now I did read somewhere where somebody said you just schedule, if you know it's gonna be f more than 40 minutes, you schedule your first one for the, you know, till from six o'clock to 6.40 and then schedule another one from, you know, 6.41 to, to whenever and just send out both of those links. So when you run out of your time, everybody just switches over to the other meeting. So I thought that was, I thought that was helpful way to get around things. So yeah, you really want to pay attention to the um, date and time, the language and all the time in here, it's going to tell you, you know, give you options to upgrade every, every, every different thing that you do. So, but if you need to change any of this over here on the right hand side, for each section, there is an edit button. So you would click edit and that's how you could change your password to sign in, um, what email address you're using, anything like that. So part two of this, um, like you can, you can link your um, calendar and contacts and I'm not sure if that's on the basic version or not. Yes. Um, it is, okay. Yes. And then here's your, where you set your password and you can have like more a more secure uh, setup if you turn on the two-factor authentication. So what it would do is you sign in and then it's going to ask you for a code that it's going to email to your email address and then you put that in. So it'd be like putting your password in and wait for that code to come and then you'd enter the code to go in. And any and all of the, you can turn things on, turn things off, you know, just, just really easy on, on that part. So, and then if you go down to the second thing over here on the left-hand side menu is meetings. So it would show any upcoming meetings. I should have scheduled one just so you could see something there. Um, upcoming meetings, you can even go back and look at previous ones. Um, we're not going to really get into personal room and meeting templates yet because I think that's a little a little more advanced. So <laughs> maybe we'll have to do a third Zoom meeting <laughs> class. But if you were going to schedule a meeting, you go over here to the right and click the schedule meeting. And then it is going to look like this. So you'd put your topic in here, um, any any description you want, date and time, how long it's going to be, and again it's your basic can only be 40 minutes. So like, it, whoops, now it's not gonna, can I go back? I didn't mean to click it. Okay, so here is another, op, you know, if you're in the middle of it, you can upgrade at any time if, if, you, if you need to. But again, here is your, um, time zone that you're going to want to be paying attention to. Make sure you don't schedule it in different time zone. Um, and then here, I guess, uh, recurring meeting. So if this was going to be a meeting you're going to have every month or every Monday, or once you click that, it's going to ask for more specifics on and that's going to be a reoccurring meeting. Don, is there is there a fee involved with upgrading any of this? Yes. Yes, there's there's like paid paid versions. I guess I should have looked up the price on on those. Um, I'm trying to remember. I looked at it briefly, but I didn't I didn't write anything down. Um, but I can I can hey, get Don, that information. Yes. Uh, for meeting ID, the personal meeting ID codes are really long and, and and not very personal. Is there a way to to select a meeting code that you'll use all the time? I believe right down here at the bottom, it says generate automatically, or you can click a personal meeting ID. And I think back in the profile, there was a personal, oops, I did it again. Man, this thing's touchy. Um, Change your go back and look. <laughs> what was that? 
change your settings on your mouse. I'm not using my mouse. Oh, you're using a pad? Um, yeah, because I've only got so many USB ports. <laughs> got it. Got I had to plug in my headphones. Um, let me look here, Kathy. I think, okay, so when you sign up, you get a personal meeting ID. So this one, if you look, it ends in 358. I could show it, but not on this yeah. screen. Um, and then when we get back down here, I believe, I gotta go slow. Okay, so if I click personal meeting ID, it's gonna be, I, I'm assigned a personal one. So this is my personal meeting ID. So if you click okay. personal, it should stay. Okay, so, so it, 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 but it assigns you one and, and whether you like it or not. Right, and it's a, it's a set okay. meeting, meeting ID, yeah. All right, thank you. It, it and I'm assuming just because the, the volume of how many Zoom meetings must be going on at any given time. Thousands. Yeah, they must have to have a lot of, a lot of room for codes. <laughs> it would almost be better to generate automatically so you get something different because if you didn't, you'd get the same ID, but you'd have to then double check your date. Mm -hmm. and that could cause you a lot of trouble. <laughs> forgetting what date you're supposed to be doing. All right. And then down here, you can are starting it to get into some of the, is that right? I don't know if that one's out of whack. Anyway, so um, you can start everybody, including the host with the video off where they have to turn it on. And then there's more meeting options here. Um, enable it so that people can join the meeting before the host is there. I've had some of them where I log on and it says the host is not here, but it, 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 you know, it says it'll do a sound when, whenever the, the host joins in. So um, you can also mute participants upon entry so that they have to unmute um, and then automatically record meeting on the local computer. I have a question, Dawn. Um, mm -hmm. When I did this, there was an, at the advanced options where you are right here, there was something called an able waiting room. So that means people are sitting out there and it, 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 it will show up in the waiting room that there are people out there and you have to allow them to enter. So like you can see, oh yes, I did invite um, Susie Smith, she can come in, you know, oh, okay, just okay. a little bit, a different level of security. So I think it's further down. There's, there's a whole lot of options when you go to actually, um, set up. Cause, cause on my outline, I was talking about like pre-meeting things because the yeah, other thing is if you have co-hosts, you need to make sure everybody's on the same, the most current version of zoom. You can't have people on different zoom versions. So that was oh. one of the one of the how often does zoom uh, change the version is it get updated automatically um i was going to look and see if that was a setting somewhere where you know where it updates automatically um but some you know some people have their their um personal computer set to like you know they want to want to update things not just have the computer do it automatically so it's done. Let me jump in for a second. I can tell Absolutely. you with the UT account, we have to physically go in and update it. Okay. It will not do it automatically. Okay. So anyway, that was just one of the hints that, you know, didn't even cross my mind was, you know, everybody on the same version. All right. So I skipped the webinars and the recordings for now. Um, they really don't have um, a lot of information. It's not like different things to turn on and off. It's, you know, um, so I, th I think that's maybe for the, the action, you know, the paying version, not the basic version, because there wasn't much in there. Um, so when you get down to settings, so this is where, you, here, here we go, here's the waiting room. So each one of these has you know, kind of a little description here. And then this over here is toggle on and off. So if you, so if I were actually on this screen, so, and I would click that, it would change it to look like this one down. Um, is any of these off? Anyway, 
Maybe I can't change these. Oh, these are locked. The ones that are light blue are locked. So you can't change those in the free version. But this one you could click and then that little circle would move to this side. And that would mean it would that would mean it was off. So when it's to the right, that means it's on. So this would be if I was setting up a meeting right now, then the, the waiting room would be on. But basically the host it, it makes sure that the host is in the meeting before anybody else can can come in. And then um, this one down here, embed passcode in the invitation link for, for a one-click join. So they just have to click the, the button one time. Um, and then there's, there's, you know, different security levels. So um, this would be like a dual authentication for the users to join. So they click on it and then they have to get a code to, to actually log into the meeting. So that one's, here's, here's how it looks like when it's off. So it's gray when it's off, it's blue when it's on. And then, and, and these, you can, you can adjust these settings per meeting. So depending on what kind of a meeting, you know, if you're having a meeting like this where we're interacting with each other, you don't want to set it to where they can't unmute. But maybe if you are having well, like the, just to use the example of the virtual uh, book signing or book publicity tour that he was doing, they didn't want people to be able to talk. So there wasn't even an option to unmute. Um, you could just use the chat. So, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's very versatile that way. Um, here you go. You can um, start meetings with the host video on, um, start meetings with per participants on and then again the participants can still um, manage their own settings but this is just allowing them to be on when they, when they log in and then you know audio type um, here again is join before the host enable the meeting ID So these are just some of the same settings that we're under when you're scheduling your meeting. You can um, have a reminder on your desktop so, you, so it reminds you that you've got a Zoom meeting, you're hosting a Zoom meeting that's coming up, uh, muting the participants on entry. So here down here is the chat. So you can allow um, participants to send messages to all participants. Um, and you can prevent them from saving the chat. If you don't have that checked, they can save the chat that shows up on the, on the screen. Anybody can. All right. And then down here, there, you can allow um, participants to chat between each other where not everybody can see the chat. I think that is set up for the host like you can individually chat the host is all, all already on there, but this is like um, if I wanted to send Julie a message in the chat privately that not everybody saw, this this is, would be the setting that you would go on and off. All right, and then your file transfer. Oh, sound notification when someone joins or leaves. Um, it looks like the default of that is off, so that would be good. I don't know if I'd want it to ding when somebody was coming in or out. It would distract me. <laughs> um, file transfer. So this toggle would be um, whether participants can, can send files through the chat program. And then this checkbox allows you to, to only allow specific types of files. So that might be, you know, just PDFs or maybe just a JPEG picture mm -hmm. file. And then this one, feedback to Zoom. Whether you want to, I don't know, do a survey at the end and send it to Zoom. Also en enable users to provide Zoom feedback. I did not go through each one of these. I'm sorry. There were so many. <laughs> to actually
to practice <laughs> what it was or wasn't. Um, and then always show the meeting control toolbar at the bottom. I didn't know you could shut that off, but apparently you can. But um, And then this is the toggle that allows you, so if I was sharing this, if you want somebody else to be able to share their Zoom screen, because it's not even an option when when you go to share the file, the Zoom the, the the Zoom window is not there, so I can't show you in live time what Zoom is doing if that's not if that's not turned on. Sorry, style musical stylings of Lane. <laughs> If you heard the squeaker toy. Um, and then screen sharing, allow hosts and participants to share their screens during the meetings. And then who can share? So host only, all participants. And who can share when someone else is sharing? Host only and all participants. And then disable desktop or screen share for users. Um, Bain, just, uh, uh, Don, just to make sure I understand. So, so when we set up a meeting, we go through all of these options before we set up the meeting or is this, the, these are, these, these that we're going through now, the, the one when I did schedule a meeting that just had two screens, those are the basic ones for that specific meeting. Okay. These are ones that you can sh set up and, and, and they'll stay that way. Okay. Any any time. So okay. this is like in a, in a separate section. The other one was in the meeting and in share meeting, and that was those were for that specific meeting. But this one is like your your general um, settings. So if there's things on here that you know you you won't ever change, um, and then there's the whiteboard. So you can allow whiteboard content, and that way you could actually you know draw things on the screen and, and people can see it. Um, just like a whiteboard that you would have at, a, at another meeting. Um, annotations, remote control. During the share, screen sharing, the person who is sharing can allow others to control the, screen, the shared content. So maybe someone else could advance it or you know, change pages or something like that. That helps if you're trying to teach somebody how to do a particular uh, activity, maybe on a spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. If you only have two, three, four people and you want them to be able to point to a particular column or whatever, that would help a lot. And um, nonverbal feedback. That's the little icons. They're down there, the, I don't know, the thumbs up, the raise hands, the hearts. Um, meeting reactions, the emojis, those are turned on. It looks like the nonverbal feedback is not, um, at least on this, this setting. And then the host can remove participants. And then this, this would be allow them, allow previously removed participants to rejoin. And then this is where you can allow participants to rename themselves. So if you didn't like how it was showing up on the screen, um, maybe you put in your nickname and you'd rather people know that don't know your nickname to know who you are, you could change it. Um, and then here is hide participants pro profile pictures in the meeting. So if some people have their their profile picture up there. If they don't have their video on, it might show their picture. You can have that on or off. And then here are some advanced ones. Um, we won't go through too many of those. Um, you can report to Zoom if there's anything you feel uh, is an inappropriate behavior to their trust and safety team. Um, the breakout rooms, I mean, I think that's pretty advanced 
get pra practice on just just using the basic controls first and get used to those for because I saw you can you can do polls and everything like that and like have it set up ahead of time so you just click a button and people have like a minute to answer your questions and stuff but that that seemed like a little advanced for for our first hosting a zoom meeting um, so auto answer group in chat enables users to see and add contacts to auto answer group in the contact list on any chat. Any call from members of this group will uh, be automatically answered. It says only show default emails uh, when sending invitations. These look like pretty, pretty advanced options to have to go through. We will never use that HTML. Yeah. No. <laughs> and we're back, email notification. So you can get an email from Zoom if somebody joins your meeting before you're there and, and have it set up and then um, notify hosted per participants when a meeting is canceled. Um, and again, these, these other ones down here and other were, were pretty, pretty advanced. Well, dang, that was fast. I didn't think I, get through it that that fast. Um, any questions? You want, want me to go back through some of those? Do you want to, how, how many of you have a an actual Zoom account set up? Uh, the basic one, the free one. Yes. Julie does. Mary does, Jan does. There, I was gonna stop sharing. Okay, now I can see people again. Um, so, I mean, if you want to set one up and- Not this, and, Mary. <laughs> set, 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 set up your account and um, practice it. I mean, you can, you can, you know, just send out an invitation to a couple of your friends. When, when I was practicing um, for the very first Zoom, or computer class, I made my sisters um, do, do a Zoom meeting with me. We were in the same house, so they, they were doing it on their phone, so they had to go in different rooms because we were getting some feedback. <laughs> but, I have a I mean, question. Yes. Can you show me how you shared your screen? Because I tried that the other day in a meeting. I was given permission to share. And I never got it. I don't know if it was because I was on my iPad rather than my computer. Because every time I try to share, do video on my computer, I get the blue screen of death. Okay. Um, so de so uh, where are your meeting controls on, on your side? Do you see the participants, the chat, the share screen? Yes. Okay. So if you, so, so the, in the other meeting when you were given permission, you click the share screen and it, didn't that's when it gave you the blue screen or no on my oh. computer anytime I try to use the video in zoom it gives me the blue screen of death so I was I switched over to my iPad gotcha and I mean I get the even now I have a share content button but I couldn't ever get it to come up um Doc, Dr. Chris, can we can we allow Mary to to share her screen? Do you have something you want to? I guess we could just look at your desktop. Sure, we can do that. Yeah, we can just uh, look at her desktop. But I will give her access right here, like I did last time, was Mary. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I don't know what happened last time, so. Yeah. So okay. you should be able to uh, share your screen, and it'll probably be your desktop. So what okay. it's going to do when it when it come, when you click share screen, it's going to ask you what screen. So if you have multiple things open you've got to, you've got to pick the the screen that you want to share so it looks like smaller ones okay it says share my photo zoom or messenger um sh do your sh do your share your photos is it just okay. going to go to your your file manager probably maybe no what i when i did this what i had to do was first of all open up what i wanted to share Okay. And, and then, and then when I went to, sh to share a screen, it gave, like, if I wanted to open up, like, I, I wanted to share a Word document, I had to, first of all, open up that Word document on my desktop, and then when I click shared screen, 
it it listed that. Okay. Well, hold on. Let me, I've got it in a, a what I tried to share before was a PowerPoint. So let me try to open that up. Okay. Okay. Well, PowerPoint on. is a large, a very large file, so you're going to have to give it time to, to load. Typically, a PowerPoint is takes time, no matter what we're doing it in, to load it. So yeah, that it, could it, have been a problem. Yeah, and it does take a little time. I've been doing this, folks, uh, since March uh, with uh, <laughs> presentation. So what I usually do is I would already already have my presentation up and ready to go. Mm -hmm. somebody allows me to share my screen, then it pops up automatically for me. So that's usually what I tell folks. I tell them, I already have your PowerPoint presentation up and ready to go. And as soon as you allow access to share that, it'll pop right up. I would advise if you had more than one screen that you were trying to share, do exactly what Dr. Chris just said, have them open and put in your menu bar. So then when it comes up to make the selection, you can pick which of one, two, or three that you want to you wanna share. Exactly, exactly. It's kind of like being ready for a race. Yeah. You know, ahead of time. Earthquake. Are y'all singing anything? I've got stuff up here, but it's not what I was trying to show. We're not getting anything. Is there another setting in the background that she has to change? Did you click your, did you, you so you opened a file. Did you click your share screen again? Um, I don't have that again. I've got a share content at the very top. Or oh, she's on an iPad. And if I click on the share contact, uh, content, it gives me an option of screen photos, iCloud Drive, or a website, or bookmark, or whiteboard. Pick one. Let's try it. I wouldn't do photos. That could be very large. Okay, I did iCloud Drive. Oh, it, I see what it is. I have to like actually pick something out of there, I think. Yes. Yes, that's okay. like the main title. Oh, yep. There you go. All right. Yay. I don't know what, don't know what plant that is. Oh, there we go. Canna. So, all right. So then I just need to figure out how to actually share a PowerPoint. Because so I getting... think you just have to know where you saved it so you can, you can have it open. It. Yeah. Yeah, I opened, I opened it, but it didn't give me the option to yeah. share it. I, I still think I'm going to, I'm going to send you a link. Well, I'm just going to put it in the chat. So okay. I, I Googled the, I Googled the um, instructions for iPad. Okay, cool. There you go. So that probably looks more like what you were seeing. Cause I, I do see the, on the on the one picture, it said screen photos, iCloud, Box, Dropbox, Google Drive, wherever. Okay, I think I've got it now. I understand better. Thank you. Absolutely. So there we go. Y'all don't have to look at that picture anymore. Pretty giddy. <laughs> <laughs> it's always best to have it ready to go. Yes. Pull it up and have it ready to go. I told you I was all new to this. Hey, you're doing good. You're doing good. You're doing good. Ms. Don, let me, let me jump in and say a couple of things again. Using Zoom, you know, since March and uh, pretty much every day, folks, uh, my family, we actually have a family Zoom every Sunday at three o'clock. Uh, so everybody in my family knows how to get on Zoom, even my mom and dad. So they get on there. We usually, you know, talk for a couple of hours uh, via Zoom every Sunday. We've been doing that since uh, the end of March. Right. Uh, so it's, it's a good way for me to see them if they're out of town. Um, but I was in a conference last week. Uh, there was a national conference. It was 200 of us uh, in that conference. And I was in a conference this week, and it was 1,300 of us at that conference. Let me tell you something, folks, and be mindful of this, because somebody found this out the hard way. 
So Ms. Dunn was talking about the chat box. You can chat privately with people. Like I sent Ms. Julie a private text, you know, uh, asking her about the link, you know, uh, for this um, session that we're having today for the website. Well, we found out that if you are talking to somebody privately, when those chats are saved, those private chats come up in that save box. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -oh. So we were <laughs> able to see some of those other chats that people were talking about, and some of them were not good. And they got yeah, that, one, that would be not nice. <laughs> so yeah, they got called out on it. This was a national meeting. So be mindful when you're sending out private chats. Uh, if if you know whoever's running that Zoom meeting, if they decide that they want to, you know, save all of those chats in that chat box, it will also save those private chats. So be careful, folks. Somebody had to find that out the hard way. Uh, and they got called out on it, so be careful. <laughs> big brother, big brother, big brother. Yeah. yeah. So it's not private, private. Again, they have to record the chat box and print it out. And that happened because during that conference, a lot of people, like Ms. Dunn just did, a lot of people were sending links, you know, to other extension sites and things like that. So within that, you know, people were like, well, can we save the chat box? Can we save it? It's like, yeah, sure, you can save the chat box. So it got saved. And what we found out was when it got saved and printed out that, yeah, we saw a lot of private uh, messages and yeah, not good, not good. So be careful. Chris, I've got a question. Sure. Can you hear me? Mm-hmm. A couple of times I've been in Zoom meetings and have intended to send a message to everyone, just, you know, thanks for a great meeting, that kind of thing. And then I've looked at it and seen that it went to one person that I didn't even know. And I, I don't know how that happens. Do you know do, do how you to avoid that? Do you see that? Do you have your chat box open? Your chat window? No. Yeah, open it up. No, but I can get it. Okay. All right. So you see the chats all above it. And then down there, it says two. Right. And there is a little uh -huh. drop down arrow. So right. Dr. Chris has it set up. You can do everyone or Everybody. to Dr. Chris. Right. So if it's not set to everyone, it's going to go to that, you know, and whoever. I just, so mm -hmm. I just need to make sure I look at that. I don't, I don't know how that happened. Like I said, it was going to somebody I didn't even know, but it was just their name was in there somehow. So just right, watch yeah. what I get ready to do it and make sure it says everyone or whatever. Yeah, I always okay, look thank at the you. chat. I always look at it because okay. it depends on how the host would set it up. I, I set it up for everybody to be able to chat with anybody. Uh, but I was just on a meeting today where the host is set it up for you to communicate with him and you can communicate with anybody mm -hmm. else. Right. So you just always have to look at that chat and just uh, see before you start, uh, you know, typing and sending it because again, the host sets it up uh, the way that they want it. Uh, but again, I always right. ask to where people can actually chat with each other and chat with me. Uh, but it, yeah, today, yeah, our presenter just had it where you can just chat directly with him and nobody else. I have another question about the chat room um, or the chat box. So I noticed down here across from everyone, it says file. So if I click file, does that mean that it's going to save all of those chats and, and no, the no. private chat too? Or what, what does that mean? What does uh, file, file mean? is where you can share a file. <laughs> so you could share a PDF that you had, or maybe you had a Excel sheet, depending on what settings, you know. So if you click on that, it's going to bring it up like, you know, what, what do you want to share? So I would be, so, so if I, if I, I don't understand. So there, because okay. I that, that's I'm, I'm sending one. Sharing. I'm sharing one right now. Awesome. You can check it out. Oh, okay. So now I if you gotcha. double click on that. I got you. It should download it. Okay. Oh, maybe it won't for me since I sent it. I don't know. Nice. <laughs> so, who, so who can save the chats? Only the person it, who is the owner of If you of go the to the right of that, um, where there's that little box with three dots, there's the save chat right there. Oh. But again, that's if the host allow, allows you to save it. Okay. So it may not be there on all chats that you're on. If it's not there, you, they've set it up so you can't save the chat. But this one is set up so you could. So if you hit the save button, it's going to ask you where you want to save it, and it's going to save it for you. So, Don, where is it that you have sent us this thing? We 
you can share. Do you have your chat window open? Chat window. Okay, here it comes. Yes. Oh, yeah, I see it. Thank you. I'm trying to open it. Just <laughs> click on it. If you double click on the uh, JPG that comes up, it'll come up separately outside your window, typically. It'll just open it up as a JPEG and you can save it to your computer if you're so inclined. Or you can save the whole chat room and you'll still have it available. When you're sharing documents, the file transfer is a really, really good tool. I don't know if there is a size restriction. Don, did you see anything about size restriction? I did not see anything in the. I didn't. I haven't either. Because if you're if you're sending something like a PowerPoint. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to let you do something that big. Very large. Even when you're sending them within a PowerPoint program, it's very large. So. I'm going to try and send the PowerPoint program. Yeah. Or my, to... my PowerPoint for tonight. Yeah. Let's see. It'll probably take a while for it to load. Yeah, some of our presenters did that today. Uh, it just okay. took a while, but it can happen. Well, I don't know if I need to. I was going to say then everybody would have the, but I should make it a PDF. I'm just going to see if it'll let us. Let me. If you have a lot of pictures, it'll take a long time. Mm -hmm. Covered that today. The, the way you can reduce the time that is involved with the picture is to put it in at a, sh at a lesser resolution when you in load it into your PowerPoint, which is probably another entire lesson on how to resize and how to deal with resolution. But there, it, you know, even on a website, a website, you put tiny little pictures in, but they'd show up really good. But if you did that same picture, and I sent it to one of you as a printable picture, you probably might not know what that picture is. It'll be very stepped and very blurry. But that's just how the technology gets around the speed of doing something. So Dawn, how do you open it? I see hosting Zoom meeting. How do I get that to it, open? You can only open it if you have a PowerPoint program. I was just seeing, because that's a lot larger file than I was okay. uploading before. I was just seeing if there, if it was going to give us, I'm going to, I'm going to make a PDF of the PowerPoint real quick and, and share it. So you guys have it now versus later. I've clicked on it to see if it'll download and it's still downloading. <laughs> Uh, a 19.7 megabyte is a, is a sizable, but I can tell you there's some that are much larger than that even. Because a lot of that was text. Right. Yeah, it, when you're downloading the PowerPoint, it's got a, a bar next to the, the, the number, and that's going to tell you the progress in downloading the file. And I can tell you it's probably only one sixth of the way, one seventh of the way. So it would take a long time. Okay. So I just made a, a PDF of all the screen of the PowerPoint. So I'm sure in that one now it should be a lot less. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. <laughs> just a few. of the size. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like I said, there there's a lot of functions on there once you get to using it more that looked pretty cool. So where where do I see what you're sharing? And is it that I can't see it because I am on a phone participating <laughs> on my phone? I think so, yes. Okay, thank you. If you were participating on both your phone and the computer screen only because of sound, you would be able to see it, should be able to see it on your computer. 
I think and that is true. Kathy, you can. Right, Kathy does that. She she wants the sound from her phone, which has a better microphone, typically, and and that way she can do both. And uh, and I'll get the um, PDFs out. Um, I might just attach them with the newsletter. <laughs> We can make okay. those PDFs available, uh, Don. If you're, if you want to do that, we'll okay. we talk about that because okay. that that would be that is a file typically that everybody can open. Okay. PowerPoint, you'd have to have software. I did, I just did a PDF of the PowerPoint, so it'll be the same thing. Yeah, and yeah. Don, if you were wondering, yes, I was able to save the PDF. Excellent. Cool. Excellent. Well, I can tell you the uh, the PowerPoint is still loading. <laughs> it's just now at half. Even when you even when you load a PowerPoint to a website, which should be much faster, it is faster, but it's still slow. Um, and that's why when you put them together you make sure you put your photos in at reduced size. Your head is going to tell you to put them in at the best resolution your eyes see. But what you don't realize is what you're inserting them in can see it at a better thing, but you can put it in at 72 DPI, which is not a printable concept. But, you know, it's, it's just something else we all have to learn. I found that out on the newsletter. Yes. People were sending PNG files and oh. and all of a sudden the newsletter went from like, you know, I don't remember what it was, like seven kilobytes to it the the email program says, No, we're not sending this. Right. <laughs> Certain file types are much larger. Like if you ever tried to sell send a TIFF, I would recommend you don't. Find out from somebody how to convert it to another file type. Um, because they're extremely large. In most cases, your email will refuse because you have a capacity that is built into it and they'll say, nope, sorry, we can't send that that way. But it's just, I mean, the more, the more you use it, the, the easier it becomes. Easier it becomes, so. And it's a great way to chat with I don't know it's a great way to chat with people in Wyoming <laughs> family right it's where you do with family that's yeah. what I do yeah we did a we did an Ohio California Tennessee deal <laughs> and we ran out of time and didn't have them set up ahead of time so you had to scramble but yeah so but I, I mean I can Go ahead. I just tried to save this and it said I don't have permission to save it. Ah, that's possible. Do you have it? Do you have it on security? I don't know. I just, I just clicked save chat and it saved it. Show in folder. I don't know where it saved it to. Well, it I says you don't back. have permission to save it in this location. Oh, and yeah. I don't know what location. You probably were, it was probably automatically set to change at an area you, you are not, you can't save things to. So you have to know, you have to see where that went to or tried to go to. When I you click save, it, it went automatically. So I didn't even get a chance to save where to go, but I said to view it and file and it said it, it saved it to a Zoom, like my document Zoom. So I wonder if you have to have your account you have to have your basic account set up and it that it sets be. that up there yeah because it's like that for the ut account so yeah once everything gets finished recording then it'll set up a folder a zoom folder and everything goes into that zoom folder that's great yeah if some of these things like the pdfs and things you are jpegs you can save them for those of you that may not know how to get around the file area of your computers it's better to point it to your desktop because you'll find it on your desktop. Okay. 
You can, this is like one gigantic file drawer and you're pointing it at a certain direction. And once you figure that out, you go, oh, you know, it's not that pull the drawer out and put a folder in, but it is assign it to a slot. That's how it works. You, but, but, you know, just like she said, she didn't have permission. Well, it probably was going to something that was a basic folder for the entire system and they don't let you save things there, which is a good thing. <laughs> my outline real quick, wherever it went. So, so some of the other things on the, the outline that I had, so we went through the controls, but um, you know, part of it was when you're scheduling your meeting or after you schedule your meeting, you gotta, you gotta share the link with everybody that you want to attend. Um, and then your pre-meeting testing, make sure, oh, I didn't finish my sentence there. Make sure all of your co-hosts have the same version of the, make sure everybody updates their, their Zoom version. Where does the Zoom version show? Where does it tell you what Zoom version that's what they're going to want to know. When you open up Zoom, or just if you're doing it on your own Zoom. As on, on your own Zoom. I'm assuming there's a... a, a there's probably going to be an about. Mm -hmm. there is, well, on this one from Dr. Chris, there is. It's an about the Zoom. Yeah. And it, it'll bring up the version right there. That's where it is. It's in about. I just did this. I didn't know if I signed into my Zoom account if it would mess up me being on the meeting, so I didn't want to. Yeah, no, it's it's out. under it's under. Ut. Whoop! I just did the Apple instead of the Zoom. Are Are you saying that there's some place right now where everybody can look no. and see what? No, no, you have to have a Zoom account. Okay. Okay. This is on your Zoom account when you're actually ho hosting a meeting. Now you can see the version of the Zoom that you're viewing. Right. But you won't know your own unless you're using your own. Well, how, how do I know what, what Zoom version you're using? And when you open it up, it'll say zoom.us. Oh. And okay. on the drop down, it's going to say about. Just click that. And when I open it up for Dr. Chris's, it says version 5.02 and a bunch of numbers. I, I mean, right now you're saying I, there's something I can click on the screen that tells me what version it is? Yes, and what version he has. Up at the top, it says zoom.us. Very, 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 very top. Not, not, I'm trying to see where I've got, I've got, I've got a lot of things open. Dr. Chris is saying I got Don's picture open. I got to close. Look for about us. Ah. Just look up at the top. At the top of mine, it's oh, yes, yes, I see it. Yes, information. A green, a green icon. Yes, thank yeah. you. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things up there. There's also something on mine that says check for updates. There we go. Also says schedule. I meeting. found it. Yeah. It's to the top far left, at least. On mine. mine looks like a, a little green shield with a check mark in it. Yes, that's what mine does too. Mm -hmm. Are y'all on PCs? Yep. Yes. Well, I am. That's the other thing that you'll find a little bit confusing. If you're on a Mac, it's going to show you one way. If you're on a PC, it's going to show you one way. If you're on a Surface, it's going to show you one way. If you're on an iPad, it's show you another way. So you just have to be patient and just kind of keep looking because there's usually hidden somewhere. <laughs> I have a question about being on different devices. What, what determines how you show up? I was on a neighborhood meeting the other night and got on real quickly from my iPhone and it just showed up as iPhone. It didn't show up as Renee's iPhone or anything. 
Um, and I really didn't want to be totally anonymous. Uh, how, how, is there a way to fix that? So you can, um, on, on your iPhone, you can download the Zoom app and oh, access okay. it from there if you're okay. just logging in from your iphone i think that's how it's gonna oh, show okay. up as iphone okay thank you yep like having a door <laughs> mm -hmm. the sad thing is some of this starts to make sense after you think about it for a while <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if you start doing it in March, yeah, you figure it out by the time we <laughs> yeah. see. Yeah. Yeah. Back to back Zoom meetings. I wonder if Santa's gonna use Zoom this year. Instead of Probably. flying around del <laughs> delivering all the presents. <laughs> <laughs> Send it Amazon. We'll probably see the map where he's traveling <laughs> the world. That's what we'll see. I do remember that with my grandson. It's like, where is Santa Claus located now? Oh, <laughs> almost here. I remember back in the day when I was growing up, the the news, the weatherman at at the local news station would track Santa on Christmas Eve with the you know Doppler or whatever the oh, yeah. latest and greatest was. <laughs> Hi, Grant. I see you. <laughs> hey, Mr. Grant, how's it going? <laughs> He's making an appearance. Awesome. <laughs> Tell him to learn about Zoom. Have a seat and learn about Zoom, Mr. Grant. I turned off the sound. You didn't hear him say I surrender. Does anybody have any other questions, things you've come across in your different Zoom meetings? Doesn't have to be about hosting Zoom. We can figure it out. I think Mr. Jamie has a question. On. Mr. Jamie. Turn, turn your voice on, Jamie. Let me unmute you. Go ahead. I'm muted. All right. Now, uh, I, you know, I, this is something I never thought I'd ever seen happen. It's always been a principle in the criminal justice system or whatever. A man gets to face his accuser in court. I was talking to Judge McCollum today, and he said it's become the most boring job in the whole wide world because so much of their stuff now is done by video conferencing. And he said, it's, hey, I sit in my little office, and I get 17 lawyers and maybe in six different states, you know, and here we are selling great, great civil suits that involve millions and millions of dollars and all the other stuff, and I never left my office yet. But anyway, this pandemic has really, really changed the way that we live and the way we communicate. And some of the principles, you know, the criminal justice system has just, it's just changed so many of the principles that we were born and raised with. And it is really something. It's, it's amazing to someone like myself. Big changes. Yeah, big change. And the thing about it is, Mr. Jamie, a lot of this stuff that we're using now, I think we're going to use into the future. Oh, yes. Oh, absolutely. Zoom, this yeah, is, Zoom is not going away. Is Microsoft Teams is, is not going it's away. I mean, we're going to start we like using it or this. Not. And, yeah, we're going to use it. I, 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 you know, I, I just hate when I was a kid, I didn't learn to type. You know, because if you're not familiar with the keyboard, it is just the most absolutely lost place you've ever been in your life so just, anyway, just one finger at I a time mean, even the even well it takes me a week and a half to do that julie <laughs> so anyway that was you know but anyway it's just the way it's coming the way it's happening it is i think it's going to get even better and faster because the complexity of Zoom and the go to webinar and go to meeting and all of the others they're all similar platforms and they all have different uh, different things you can do. And they're going to come together where they all have all those things and then they're gonna get very competitive. And typically the prices for the advances, advanced versions will come down. Um, it's kind of like the entire technology world. That's, you know, you can buy a great big screen TV right now for a whole lot less money than you could 10 years ago. Um, and, and that's the way it's gonna go.
we're just getting better. We just have to not forget how to actually talk with each other in a real meeting, a face-to-face -face meeting. And hopefully we get there soon. So how about we give Ms. Dunn a virtual round of applause? Always great, always great. These are fun, I like these. These are fun, these, these are, are fun. fun. These are fun. Hey, there she's got, she's got the chat. There you go, that's, that's the little <laughs> icon that Don's got set up for this meeting. The only other one is a thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was just looking on the um, costs of the Zoom um, things. So it was Zoom Pro, which is the next level up is, um, I'm just gonna round it to $150 a year per license. So that would be up to 100 participants, um, unlimited group meetings, social media streaming, and one gigabyte of cloud recording. Anyway, so it goes on up from there. Different types of organizations move to do the different platforms. Like I do a genealogy one. And because they want more availability to interactive types things, they went to go to webinar. But I think that that's just going to be a moving kind of deal. Yep. Like for us, we're dealing with Zoom because UT's got an advanced package for Zoom. So Dr. Chris could probably have 500 people. You know, and 500 people on a screen is a pretty big screen. <laughs> but, uh, you know, yeah. It works. No, you're right. We, we actually do have the advanced uh, copy for, of Zoom. So we can have, yeah, we have unlimited hours, unlimited number of folks that can get in, you know, for the most part. But the, the neat thing about the conference we were in today, and it actually ended today, uh, it was Microsoft Teams. Uh, wow. The University of Florida, it was their IT system. So mm -hmm. at 13 people in one room, Okay, wow. that live event can hold up to 10,000 people. Wow. Around the world, that's fantastic. 10,000 people it can hold up to. So I thought that was pretty neat. Wow. That's very cool because I've done a class from Israel, but we didn't have Zoom then. And that would have been very cool. It was like, uh, about how plants talk to each other. And it, it, it would have been really cool to see it on a screen like this, you know, and share some of the things they were showing us. Is our security keeping up with all this? Is the computer security keeping up with it? The security of what? I mean, we're talking about your classes, mention the class or whatever. Did anybody hack into that? You know, I don't think they would want to, but, but it, there would be some types of Zoom meetings where you would want security to be definitely very tight. So my, my thought is they definitely have figured out security on this. Yeah, I, mean, I was, I don't was think going to go into a Zoom meeting or anything like it if it's not secure. Yes, some of the things that I was looking at um, just doing my research was um, like UT and, and other education. So, I mean, you can have it where the um, participants have to get a code to log in. To log I mean, in. It, it can be pretty, pretty secure. It's kind of like that when they say two, two uh, second, you want to have a second verification of your, and that's why they do that. Because if, the, if it's two-step verification, then you're not going to get to go into whatever you're trying to enter unless you receive a code from your cell phone. In my case, it's cell phone. But banks do that. Mm -hmm. um, because it's not, go, you know, and I'm sure they're keeping up with that. And I'm sure they're going to have to keep keeping up with that. Because <laughs> unfortunately, 
the people that try to hack don't stop are pretty smart. I've attended some meetings that Dixon set up and they have sent me a link and said, please do not share this. With mm -hmm. someone else. What happens if you share it? Does that person not, is that person not able to get on if you share it with someone? Probably. Probably. I just never shared it, but. Yeah. I, I know we can share the Zoom link that Dr. Chris uh, sends out. Yeah. Um, but I would imagine that is controlled by the person sending out the link. Yeah. You know, I, in a lot of cases, it would be better to have separate links if you're into the, if you're looking for that security factor. But I mean, for us, I don't, I don't think that's applicable here, but Jamie, it's a good question. And I, and I think, I think that there is an entire business built around that. I can tell you we have a Master Gardener member and that's her job is to be IT security for FedEx. As, you know, if we want to know about security, we do have a member that can talk about that. <laughs> I'm not sure what all she tell us, but she... <laughs> On, I have attended many Zoom conferences over the last six months. Mm -hmm. but I've never hosted one and so I don't know as much as many of you do but if I go to that link that you gave us and just try my hands at it do you think it it will give me enough information that I could just experiment with it absolutely absolutely okay. just pick somebody you'd like to have a meeting with and then you work it out until you get that meeting and then you're gonna learn our first family meeting was set up by a person that I would have thought had a little more tech knowledge, but she really didn't. She was a professor in a university and she just kept, we kept getting knocked off, but you know, it was like, she was going to pass it off to one of us and say, you do it, but, <laughs> but just keep trying. You, you're not going to hurt anything. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Other than maybe get frustrated, but don't let that happen. It'll work out. <laughs> Thank you. And, and watch some of those those videos that in the e email invitation, I put a couple links. If you okay. click on either one of those, they have, um, real, I mean, it's, it's, it's a really good um, training video. So, I mean, and they have different things. You don't have to watch like a whole thing. If you're looking for something specific, you can, you can find out how to do um, the, the file share or, um, you know, if you're just looking at a specific thing, you don't have to watch a, you know, three hour training video. They, they keep them like 15, 20 minutes. So they it's just on specific I, parts. They know what our thank attention you. span is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for doing this, Dawn. I really appreciate it. You bet. <laughs> Great job. And no, we didn't hear the dogs. Yeah. <laughs> Not at all, huh? Not at all. Because Lane was over here with her 